رحمه الله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللئيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاه والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفع ذنوبنا ابي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى الله على اعدائهم اجمعين من الان الى لقاء يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي يا الله ان شاء الله اكثر اعمال وفيرز اعمال اندعاء بس كلمان and inshallah we will be able to use all the opportunities in this month inshallah to get closer to him beside louder salawat and gift it to Muhammad wa ala Muhammad last night we mentioned that it is required that ma'mum people who are behind imam the leader of the prayer they should follow imam in all the actions of salat so um, if i am in the second rak'ah of my salat but i was one rak'ah behind and imam is in the third rak'ah right so imagine this is my second rak'ah and this is imam's third rak'ah Imam's responsibility is to recite tasbihat arba, right? But my responsibility is to recite hamd and surah, right? And then I have the second rakah, I have hamd, surah and unut. But I know that usually tasbihat arba is not as long as hamd, surah and unut. And you told us last night that I have to follow Imam in all the actions if imam is in ruku i have to reach imam in ruku so if i can't reach imam while imam is ruku purposely and imam stands up i purposely don't go to ruku with imam the jama'ah would have problem so what should i do i have ham surah and unut and i don't have enough time imam just have tasbihat so your responsibility is that you just recite hand if you think if you're sure you would have enough time to, to recite your surah as well you will recite your surah some of the ulama some of the imams the tasbihat is a little bit longer so you can say if you're not sure that you can reach imam's ruku if you recite hamd and surah you just recite hamd you don't recite surah and unut you go to ruku make sense because I'm not sure. I have to reach Imam in Ruku. If I if I don't do it, I mean, if I do it purposely and I don't reach Imam, the Jama'at would have problem. The same thing. So if I want to start my first rak'ah and Imam is in the third rak'ah, so I know that if I start Allah Akbar, start my salat. This is a mistake that many people they make. If I want to start my salat. There is not enough time that I say hamd and surah to reach Imam, right? And the ruku of Imam. Because I didn't start my salat yet, I just arrived and I see Imam is in tasbihat. The ihtiyad wajib, mandatory precautions, is that I wait for Imam to go to ruku and then I say Allah Akbar and I reach Imam in ruku. Because I don't have enough time to say my hamd and surah. Beside Allah, salawat ala Muhammad wa like another salawat ala Muhammad wa Last night we, alhamdulillah, was able to talk about one of the other obstacles that mu'min or salik, a traveler towards Allah, would have an obstacle in order to reach Allah. One of those obstacles, the most important obstacles that no matter how strong you are to go higher and to go up, that obstacle, that problems would keep you down and would, would, wouldn't let you go higher. We talked about the hope of dunya 
I'm talking about the characteristics of this world and the great result that we got last night was that we could find last night we could find the origin of all the problems that human beings have we said that's a big claim right among all the psychologists scientists different people that they're still wondering what is the problem that this human being it has all these favors around him around her but we have all this murdering and raping and corruption and committing sins what is the problem? We said that we found it through the hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Which the hadith told us that dunya The problem is that people, human beings, they love dunya. They think this dunya is eternal, is forever. They love dunya minus Allah. The only purpose that they have of living in this world is to reach the highest level of this dunya. For the sake of this dunya, I work for the sake of this dunya and this dunya is my goal. It's not a tool, it's a goal. Hope dunya, that I love the dunya this way, no matter what, if I am a businessman, so my goal is just to make more money or I'm a professor my goal is just what to become famous right so this professor is very famous he doesn't matter so we said that this is the origin of all the problems that human beings have according to this beautiful hadith so tonight we want to inshallah take a deeper look at this topic and I want to say that the relationship that human beings have with this dunya, with this world, we have different types of relationship. Wow, I thought it's just one relationship. No, we have different type of relationship that hierarchically gets worse and worse. The first relationship that we can have with dunya, this hub with dunya that we just talked. That we love dunya for the sake of dunya. The only purpose that is in my mind to make this dunya better place to live and I don't want to associate Iman, religion or Allah into this dunya. Let me recite this beautiful, beautiful saying of Amir al-Mu'mineen from Nahjul Bala. This is saying 103. You can find it in Nahjul Bala. It's amazing how Imam is describing this dunya. I really need your attention, full attention, inshallah, to get the message. Amir al muminin said, the vicious pleasures of this dunya, in this world, and salvation. The only pleasures that is for the sake of this dunya. We talked about this. The pleasures that is only to reach and to have this dunya. The vicious pleasures. And salvations are like two enemies. Salvation is the goal of humanity, right? To reach Allah, to reach salvation, come on. This type of pleasures, minus Allah, and salvations are like two enemies or two roads. Two roads running in opposite direction. One to the north, the other one to the south. Whoever likes this one would hate the other one. If I want to look at this amazing, beautiful room, if I want to love dunya for the sake of dunya as a goal, I'm emphasizing many, many times, so people don't have, you know, wrong concept. We talked about this last night. For the sake of this dunya, if I have it, when I'm woman, I love this dunya, I love to have the best of this dunya for the sake of this dunya, but I want to be woman as well. If I want to put this together from this aspect and this perspective, Imam said there are two different roads. One goes to north, one goes to south. And I'm asking you, is it possible when you are going toward north, at the same time you are going to the south? Is it possible? No. 
No. You're either this way or this way. If you hate, if you like this one, you hate the other one. This is hubbu dunya. And you see a lot of people around yourself. Turn on your TV. Thousand examples you can see within one minute. For the sake of this dunya. Sometimes you see these people, you look at them, you feel disgust, you feel bad. Because you don't see any spiritual divine souls in them, in, into their lives. So the question is that, what is the problem of that? Why Amir al Mumin is saying this? The disadvantages of loving dunya for the sake of dunya. The first problem is that it keeps you away from the purpose of the creation. What is the purpose of creation? مَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah said the reason that I created this temporary life I'm saying temporary, you know why? Who is here that can believe that? I don't know if you're 20 years old, you're 15, you're 30, you're 40, you're 90 Can you believe how fast time is going? And you're at this age that is the meaning of the temporary of this, this dunya being temporary. Ma khalaqtul jinna wal ins illa liyabudun. The reason I created this dunya is for ibadat, right? It's for ma'rifah and ibadat. So dunya, the hope of dunya keeps you away from this purpose. How is it possible? You saw some people that they work 24-7. When it comes to Salat, Inshallah, I want to say my Salat. Okay, okay. And then he opens his eyes, he says, it's getting Qaza. Okay, let's say Salat fast because I have to, I have some clients. <coughs> By the way, when we talk about the hope of dunya, don't think it's only money, financial. No. Hope of dunya can be the hope of someone. Hope of dunya means you're so attached to this dunya. It can be my wife. It can be my husband, it can be my children, it can be my car, it can be my company, it can be my bicycle. It doesn't mean money. Whatever would attach me to itself, would keeps me away from Ibadat. It can be video game. Some people are so into video games, they play five hours a day, but when it comes to Salat, what? I still have time, it's not Qaza yet. When it comes to reciting Quran, oh, you know, Sayyid said recite not too much, not too many ayahs. No, if you have time, you should recite as much as you can with the meaning, with thinking and translation, right? Paying attention. But if you don't have enough time, yes, in that period of time, you what? You recite short. We compared, we said reciting a lot of ayahs without paying attention or not that much ayat with attention. Definitely that's better. Whoever prefers what? This dunya over akhirat. Hell is the place for them. The second problem that hub of dunya would cause, you know what is it? We mentioned it a little bit last night. The person who has, who loves dunya for the sake of this dunya, minus Allah. How many of your friends you saw that? I said that before as well. During the day, during the week, during the month, there's no praying, there's no mosque, there's no church, there's no temple, nothing. It's just living. It's just waking up, going to work, having lunch, going home, sleeping at the weekend, going to the bar, come back, same routine every week. So it is possible, we see around us. The second disadvantage of that is that these people would have very painful death. Very painful death. And this is the reason. Whatever what we are attached in this dunya to, Whatever I'm attached to, it is difficult to get apart from it. Whatever I'm attached, including good parts, 
If you love so much, someone so much, right? When you want to say goodbye, that person is going traveling, you're not going to see him or her for a longer time. It is so difficult to, for you to say goodbye. You go all the way to the airport, then you cry, please don't go there. If you have a car that you love it so much, when you have to sell it, some people they cry, oh my God, I don't want to sell my car. We see some people like this, I'm not joking. Whatever you are with and you get attached, it's so difficult to get away from it. And if I make this dunya the whole award for myself, the purpose of living in this dunya, when I want to get away from this dunya, Israel comes and says, what? Let's go. Where, how about my car? <laughs> There's not enough space in your grave. You can't take it with yourself. How about my bicycle? How about my house? I paid a lot. A lot and the tax and all the things you have, the bills, you show it to Israel, you see what I did. I'm sorry about that, but you can't take any of them with you. What should I do? You should leave them all here and go with just Kafan Shroud. Tamas God, let's go. And then that's the moment I see all these troubles. 70 years I killed myself to collect all the things and now I have to leave all of them. I don't want to leave them. This is my life. When there's no Allah, when there's no Ibadah, when there's nothing else would take care of you, this is the whole award. My car is everything that I have. I don't want to live it. That's the beginning of the pain. Remember last night I said some people, we had this example. When they wanted to die, they tell them to say Shahadatayn, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. They couldn't say it. Their tongue didn't help them. Some of them, when they got better, said, why you couldn't say it? This is as soon as I wanted to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I saw everything in my life. All my assets were passing in front of my eyes. And because I knew if I say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, I'm going to leave them, I didn't want to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Painful death and horrible death. Salawatullah Muhammad. There is a space here if you want to sit down, if someone is here, because over there you can sit down. The second type of relationship that we can have with this dunya. We're getting worse and worse. The second type of relationship with this dunya. You know, this dunya, again, I was seeing some of these runners. Someone was running in the street right here. I looked at, he is running so heavy, like not normal. Then I looked a little bit, I saw it was over the, the light. I saw there's something around his feet. I looked. Carefully, I said, okay, those weights, you saw, that they put around their feet or on their back so they get heavier, so when they want to walk or run, it's heavier, so they sweat more. Dunya and the hope of dunya is like those weights. Try to jump with them. You can't. It's too heavy. You put it yourself, right? You can take it out. So you can jump. You can be free. Imagine if Allah gave you two wings and says, come on, fly with this. If you have these wings, depends how heavy you have this dunya. If you have all these weights, some of them they have over their back. It's big like this. I thought he's ninja, but I thought, no, it's, you know, the weight. So that's so heavy that doesn't let you jump. It keeps you down. This is Ramadan. I want to fly. I want to go to Mi'raj. I want to go to Ascension. It doesn't let you, no matter if shaitan is locked or not. Why? Because you have these weights around your feet. Unless you open them. You can have them. You can have the weight with you, right? But you're not attached to them. Does it make sense? Alhamdulillah, you're educated. I don't have to talk, you know, half an hour just to open it and explain it. You're not attached to them. But you have them. The second type of relationship. Some people are the abd of dunya. It's not the hope of dunya. They are the slaves of this dunya. Slaves of this dunya. This is worse. They work for this dunya. Dunya is not working for them. They work for this dunya like a slave. 
like a slave they work for dunya like this instead of they work instead of dunya works for them so they use dunya and they like it and they enjoy it no they work for dunya and they never enjoy it i saw one of my friends in mashhad in iran he was one of the super rich people in that area and i can't say in the whole iran super rich and he was around 80 something years old 90. not very religious one night i was with him and he was going to eat i look at his food he is super rich he has a special diet food he could not eat even one piece of kebab that was in front of him i was looking at myself i can eat everything but he has the money that he can buy everything that you all the kebabs in the you know in iran he could buy it but he can't even take one piece of that and he is super rich and i was like and he said i worked all my life crazy to make money and i can't even use a simple ni'mat and favor of god some people they are the abd of dunya the slave of this dunya for money you tell them they sell everything that they have you can see their pictures some of them are famous you tell them to say anything that comes out of their mouth just with a couple of thousand dollars they will do it just for money i will do it i don't care if it's against the humanities against the no i become famous so when i sing i can everybody wow likes me or what uh, i just mentioned right no matter what i'm saying or what i'm promoting i will say it just give me the money and what is the problem of this section the second type i don't know if, if i should say it or not this is one of those scary things very scary. Should I say it? Not with this salawat. Instead of saying directly because this is scary, I want to say it indirectly. I want to give you an example of those people who were the abd of dunya, the slaves of dunya. What happened to them? Some of them, you know them. Those who were in Karbala, stood in front of the son of Rasulullah. They killed the son of Rasulullah. They saw that Hussein ibn Ali was the one that Rasulullah said, is Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. He is everything. He is the they saw that he was around the neck of Rasulullah. They saw that Hussein is the best of all people. They admitted, they confessed to it that Hussein is the best. The person who killed Imam Hussein and he brought the head of Imam Hussein to get money. He confessed that he is the best of all people and humanity. He confessed on it, but he got to this position because he was the abd of dunya. Why I'm saying? Because Imam Hussain said, "Anas, abid al dunya wa din al laqon ala al sanatim." These people are the slaves of dunya. They mumbling the name of din and religion. That's it. So these people that they are the slaves of the dunya. They are capable of standing in front of the Hujjatullah, the Imam of Asr, Imam Hussein, or Imam Mahdi, and kill them. Isn't it enough scary? And they were calling themselves Muslim. The horrible things that happened that they killed the son of Rasulullah and they stood in front of Rasulullah because they were the abd of this dunya. That's scary. I don't want to even get close to these people. 
but I might have something in this dunya that I might like it. So it's scary to say it. What should I do? It's getting serious. I thought it's just, you know, liking the dunya or something. It's getting serious. What should I do? Give me a practical solution to solve this problem. Since we don't have anything from ourselves, let's get Let's ask this question from Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. In the 20th dua and supplication of Sahih al-Sajjadiyah, dua makaram al-akhlaq. I really recommend you, once in your life at least, go read this dua with translation. Imam is telling us how and what should I do to get rid of getting attached to dunya. Remember a few weeks ago, a few, few sessions ago, I told you if you want to be someone, be the best. In your major, be the best. No matter what's your major, try to be the best. And show that as a Muslim youth, you can be the best, you can be the smartest. Yes, you can have the best. You can have the best. But make sure what is the intention behind this. Imam said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, waqfini ma yashqalani al-ihtimamu bih. Ya Allah, do not let me get into whatever would distract me from yourself. Spare me the concerns which distract me. Whatever, including human beings, or objects, or money, or whatever, or friends, that would distract me from you, let me get away from it. Employ me in what that you will ask me tomorrow about it. The day of judgment. Let me be involved with something that tomorrow, at the day of judgment, you will ask about that one. You're not going to ask me what was the color of your car. You can have the best car, but you're not going to ask me what is the call of your life, your, your car, right? But you want to ask me that day that you were sitting at home and you heard Azan's voice, why you didn't say your salat. You want to ask me about that. You want to ask me about salat because you said the first thing that you want to ask at the day of judgment is what? salat. They want to analyze. This is my transcript. They go. No, no, no. First go to Salat. If he could pass Salat, then we go to Hajj. Then we go to Ramadan. If he can pass Salat, forget about the transcript. Allah. He will ask about that. وَاسْتَفْرِقْ أَيَّامِي فِي مَا خَلَقْتَنِي لَهْ Let me pass my days in what that you will created me for. What did you create me for? Ibadat. So Sayyid, you mean we should sit in the masjid all the day to do Ibadat because you said pass my day? You know the answer. I'm sure Alhamdulillah you're so smart. The Ibadat doesn't mean Laysa al-Ibadat bi kasrat al-Diyama al-Sujood, right? Wa'ud wa It's not the, the, the amount of raka'at or salat and sujood, no. Ibadat can be you're sitting in your classroom and you're listening to your teacher and you have the intention, Ya Allah, I'm learning the knowledge to learn more, to be able to use the humanity and to learn you more, to learn about you more and to let people know about you as well. How is it possible? How many scientists you know that they have access to the deepest level of this dunya, of this alam, of this universe, but they're atheists, they're blind. But how many of them you see that they don't have that much knowledge? They have a little bit of knowledge, but they see, mashallah, it is impossible to have this organized world without a creator. It is possible to reach. Let me pass my time. You can be at your business. You can be at your shop. And you can do ibadah. You heard this riwayah, Al-Qasabu Habibullah, right? A businessman that is trying to make a halal food for his family is a friend of Allah. Another way I narrated that said, if you become, if you will die in this way that you're making it halal for your family, if you die in this time, 
you will be shaheed. Shaheed has different levels, by the way. One shaheed in battlefield, one shaheed like this, different levels. I can do ibadat, whatever I'm doing. I can cook. I am taking care of my kids. I'm raising up my kids, and that is definitely can be about it, inshallah. Remember about Imam Khomeini we mentioned this stuff? Do you want better about that than nurturing and training another generation? I'm raising up a kid, a generation that would be <coughs> mu'min. <laughs> this is the job of Anbiya, <laughs> to make people closer to Allah, right? And this is the second practical solution. How can I get away from this dunya? I have this dunya. I'm working for the best of this dunya. I can have the best car. I can have the best house, whatever. But I'm not attached to this dunya. One of the ulama, he was very rich. So someone, one of the Zuhad, a parent Zuhad, came to him and says, Really? You are an alim and you have all this money and this house and is all these people working for you? Really? Is this the Islam that they were talking about? He said, you know what? He called his servant, the alim. And he said, all this house I'm writing down is for you. I'm going to go with this, my friend. Bye. He forgave everything that he had to that servant and he said by and by. While they were going, this guy, we call it some of his darabish, he said, wait, wait, I forgot my stick in your house. Wait, let me take it. <laughs> he said, I forgave all this house to my servant. You don't forget your stick. Just, you know, the piece of wood that you have. See who's attached to this dunya? I had all this, but I was not attaching to it. That easily I could forget about it. Imam Babar alayhi salam They said the horse that Imam Babar had it was as expensive as the governor of Medina at that time he wished to have that horse Imagine you have a car that the governor of LA is like can I have that car? Do you know what that means? That's much more because we think Ahl al-Bayt, when we talk about Ahl al-Bayt, Na'uzubillah, some poor people, they didn't have money, so they had to be in the masjid, they had to live like that, because they didn't have money. <laughs> he had the horse, the markab, that, the governor, someone came to him and says, oh, this is not the way that Rasulullah was living. Imam says, this is the horse. Take him. Go. You think we're attached to it? For you. But don't do that with your car, by the way. <laughs> Someone comes to you. Is this the car? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine with this. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me pay the payments, inshallah, after that. <laughs> no. Oh, that was Imam Baghir. <laughs> Let me give you another example. Rahmatullah. You heard about him. This great Adam. <laughs> this is around Sahar Fajr, he is going to take a wuzu and say his Salat Layl. At that time, they didn't have the water tap, right, the pipe. So he put his muckle in the, in the well to get the water, right? He's taking it and he's bringing it up. What is it? It's all jewels. All gold. Ya Allah. I wanted water to take wuzu and go say my salat. Please take it back. <laughs> Again, water, take wuzu, go say salat. And he is just a Shia of Amir al Mu'minin. And the person, then when you know they closed the door of the shrine of Amir al Mu'minin, Imam Hussein, I don't know right now, but it was like this before. At night, after a certain time, they close the doors. So it's not like Mashal Alhamdulillah is open all the time. They close the doors. When Muqaddas al his student, says one night, I was like wondering where he's going. I was following him, so he was not noticing that I'm following. I saw that Muqaddas al came in front of the door of the Haram, the Holy Shrine of Amir al-Mu'mineen. The door that was locked got open, and Muqaddas al went inside, and the door was open. 
Mikulski. Of course, when he got the jewels, he put it, bring it back. He says, I won't bother to do my salat. Of course, I mean, we should open the door for him. And they said, I heard that he was negotiating with Amir al-Mu'mineen. He was having said, the scientific discussion with Amir al-Mu'mineen within the Zari. So whatever he learned during the day, he was talking with Amir al-Mu'mineen. He's discussing with, he's discussing with Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he was asking his question from Amir al-Mu'mineen. Of course he's like that. So how can I get away from this to be like this people? One of the practical way, write down as soon as possible. Remember the first night of Ramadan, I said you should, we should all have a notebook for ourselves. Write down whatever you love so much in this dunya. And be honest with yourself. Be honest. Whatever that you love so much. If it's money, if it's car, if it's children, if it's... Try to give as much as you can that thing that you love. If it's money, when it comes to donation, donate as much as possible. It's difficult at the beginning, right? But try to push yourself. Try to push yourself. If you always give $10 for donation, I wish. So you what? Now you pay? <laughs> Let's stay with 40. Add a little bit into it more. To get rid of that. Quran says, Lan bir hatta mimma You cannot reach goodness and khair unless you give from whatever you do in fa and donation from whatever you love so much. You do in fa. So I'm going to quickly wrap it up. But the question that I promise I'm we're gonna solve this problem here is this: how can I have this dunya and akhirat next to each other? <coughs> Right? Amir al Mumin says one is north, one is south. However, in Gunud, we said, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Rabbana, Atana, Fid Dunya, Hasana, Wafil, Akhirat, Hasana. Then they put this together, Dunya and Akhirat. How is it possible? Ah, you see, I said I love, inshallah, your minds work this way, inshallah, always think, produce. How is it possible? In this law, they put them together. The problem is that, it's not a problem. The, here's the beauty. This dunya is a creature of Allah. How can the creature of Allah be bad? So it is good. Allah doesn't create something that is bad, right? Remember last night we said, through this dunya, Amir al muminin became Amir al muminin Through this dunya, Ibrahim became Ibrahim. Through this dunya, Rasulullah became Rasulullah. They acted upon their, life, upon their knowledge, right? Where? From through this dunya. Imam Hussein, through this dunya, reached the highest level of humanity. So this dunya is good. The problem is that when you put this dunya next to akhirah, wal akhiratu khayrun wa abqa. Akhirah is so greater than this dunya that when you put them together, you cannot even look at dunya. Dunya is the mu'annas of? Adna, dana. That means it's past, it's humiliated, it's down, it's low. The meaning, literally the root. It, that means it's lower. Dunya is lower than akhirah. Imagine someone like me, not like me, I don't have any knowledge. Someone that has knowledge, he's speaking for you, with you. He said, MashaAllah, it's a great knowledge. But when a magic comes to him, you don't even see that person, right? <laughs> Forget about him, look at him. Because of the knowledge, because of the greatness of the other one. When you put them together, dunya and akhirah, dunya is so lower than akhirah. When it comes to dunya and akhirah together, Forget about dunya. This is the secret. You can have dunya. But when it's time that you see akhirah next to dunya, forget about this dunya. I am working. I am studying as best as possible to make as best as, as, as much as money I can, as much as knowledge and science I want. But as soon as it comes to akhirah, as soon as I heard the azan, forget about this dunya. That is the way. That you can see that you're not attached to this dunya. Some people that are blind, they think this dunya is the purpose. They forget about the akhirah. But this dunya is lower than akhirah. 
You can have this dunya. It's scary, it's dangerous. You can, we don't recommend, but you can, but when it comes to akhirah and dunya, be careful. My dunya, I always use this example. This is my dunya, the first night of my life, the first, this is my birthday, once in a year. I just want my friend to get together and have fun and something haram comes in sight from somewhere. Let's have some music, let's have this, let's have that. Huh. That's the place that you had dunya and now akhara is close to it. What do you want to do with it? You want to go out with your friends? It's good. You have to have fun. You have to have, you know, vacation. Be with your friends. You're very sure who you're going out with. But all of a sudden, you see, in the middle of what you are enjoying your time, something haram is getting involved. So I have dunya for the good purpose, for the good intention. But right now, I'm seeing that this dunya in front of, not in front, opposite of Akhara. Now I see that this way that was supposed to be towards Akhara, now it changed to south and Akhara is towards the north. Of course I'm going to change my direction. Forget about all these friends. Forget about this type of fun. I'm going to go to Akhara. I want to change my direction no matter how strong is my friends. Come on, don't be like that. Don't be silly. Don't be a kid. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm going to go towards north. Sorry, God, I can't be with you anymore. I promise him until that Akhara is not going to be opposite of Akhara. If you recite the loud salawat, I will give you the last words. <laughs> recite this revaya for you so you'll be shocked you'll be shocked <coughs> Imam Sadiq alayhi salam he was <laughs> he was passing a street and he saw that one of his friends he was constructing something in his house in his wall he was building something in his house Imam was passing, he saw him and said, What are you doing? He said, I am making a window for my kitchen. Pay attention. I'm making a window for my kitchen. Why? Because the smokes, I want the smokes to get out of the kitchen, so I had to make a window for the sake of the smokes to get out. He saw that Imam got upset. Say anything bad? It's just smoke and making window for the wall, the kitchen, so smoke go there. I didn't say anything bad. Yeah, but I just was oh, so upset. What did I say? Did I say anything bad? And I look at him and says, Don't say it that way. Pay attention, it's so delicate and so beautiful. And mom said, If you want to say the reason that you're making this, Say, I am making a window in my house, in my wall, so I can look at the sky and I can see when is Azan's time, so I can say my prayer at time. I know that the smokes are going to go out as well, but look at what you're doing from this angle. SubhanAllah. By the way, that friend, his level was higher, right? It was not like me. If it was like me, mom would say, inshallah, look good for you, go make it. But because that friend, the level is higher, so they expect more, right? They probably don't expect me like that, but they expect you guys, inshallah, like that. Change your world view, the way that you're looking. Make it divine. Remember all the time said? You're sitting in your classroom, make a divine purpose. You're playing soccer, make a divine. You're playing video game, 15, 15 minutes, not hour, a day, make it divine. I have to, this is my time, I have to. I have to have fun and good or bad, this is this type of fun we had. I'm careful what I'm doing, what I'm watching, what I'm playing, but 
This is the fun that they have. Ya Allah, I want to have sometimes fun and then go back to what is good, what is khayr to do. That's divine. Drinking a glass of water, Ya Allah, I'm going to get, get rid of my thirst to be able to speak for this moment. Divine, inshallah. So beautiful and merciful God you have. He's pushing us, He's taking us, and He's pushing us toward heaven. But some of us was like, let me go, I don't want to go. Every single thing that we see, we can make it divine and go directly and faster to heaven. But some people we don't want to take it. Salawat ala Muhammad. Amir al said, the best of you are those who don't destroy the akhirat, the other world, for this dunya, and don't ruin this dunya because of akhirat. Did you get it? I'm not going to destroy my akhirat because of this dunya, and I'm not going to destroy my dunya because of akhirat. Some people, they think they have to be all the time having tasbih and do zikr, forget about their life, forget about having fun, forget about... No, don't ruin this dunya for akhirat as well. Allah made it everything in order. So you have to enjoy and use everything inshallah on purpose. And then he said, dunya is a place of acquiring wisdom and knowledge and a place of worship for friends of Allah and angels. Can you use it? I want to be inshallah a scientist so I can get closer to Allah, I can introduce Allah and knowledge and Iman and religion to other people as well. So I want to open this huge and heavy weights from my feet, from my body, so this Ramadan, inshallah, I can jump and I can fly higher and faster, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Because we were talking about flying and getting higher and wings. My Masiba tonight, inshallah, is going to be about someone who was able to get away from this weight from this waves and get closer to Allah in a very, very short cut. You all know him very well in Karbala, Abel Fadl al-Abbas There is a riwayat that they said instead of two hands that Abel Fadl al-Abbas gave for the sake of Allah and the Imam of Asr, Allah will give him two beautiful wings that he will fly over Jannah, over heaven and all the shahada from the beginning to the end of the world, they look at him and they will feel the envy when it comes to the level of Abel Fadl al-Abbas. <coughs> ya Allah, Abel Fadl al-Abbas, the son of Amir al muminin he had the dunya in front of him. He could reach to the levels of this dunya, apparently, this dunya that Yazid wanted, When Shem came to him and says, Abbas, you are safe. Just forget about Hussein. I will give you the Aman. I will give you the letter that you will be safe. Abel Fadl Abbas, he didn't accept it. اللهم يا صل على محمد وآل محمد وأجل فرج والأن أعداء It has been now the 19th of Ramazan 
We are getting close when Amir al Mu'mineen is taking the last moment of his life. At those last moments, Amir al Mu'mineen he called and he said, Everybody leaves the room except the children of Zahra Salamullah Alayha All go out, I just want the, the children of Zahra to be in this room I don't know, maybe they reminded him of Zahra in the last moment Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, just wait a little bit, you will see a new visit Zahra again. They saw that everybody was, they trying to leave the room. Among them, they said, we see Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, he is leaving the room as well. Imam said, Abbas, oh my dear son, why you are leaving Abbas? I don't know, because I'm not a son of Zahra. No, you are son of Zahra, Abbas. Let me tell you, Abel Fas is very sensitive of this topic. He always wishes to be the son of Zahra. He's leaving the room, Amir al-Mu'mineen, calling him back. Abbas, you are the purpose that I want to talk. Oh, Abbas, stay with father. And they said, we saw that Amir al-Mu'mineen, he took the hand of Imam Hussein, the older brother, and he put it in the hands of Abel Fazl al-Abbas, the younger brother. Usually at this moment, the father put the hand of the younger one to the hands of the older. But in this case, that was the opposite. Oh, Abbas, I am not going to be in Karbala, oh my son. This is the last words I'm telling you, ya Abbas. Abayas, I am not in Karbala. Maybe he said his brother Hassan is not going to be in Karbala. His mother, no. Abbas, we are all looking at you, oh my son. You are in Karbala. Make sure you don't leave your brother Hussein. That's why when Shem, when he came, when he told Abbas, come towards us, he said, oh my Lord, you want me to leave my brother Hussein for this dunya? No. That's why when he had access to the water of Quran, he didn't drink water because he could see the lips of Imam who are dry. The children of Imam who are thirsty. Abel Faz get detached from this dunya. Allah elevated him. He gave him two wings. Ya Allah, for the sake of Abel Fadl al Abbas, let us be at the level of Jannah, close to Abel Fadl al Abbas, inshaAllah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammadin wa ajjid maraja wal'an a'da'ahum ajma'in اللهم عجل لبريك الفرج والعافية والناس ومد في عمره الشريف وزين الأرض بطول بقائه وجعلنا من عوامه وأنصاره وشيعته يا رحمن يا رحيم ثبت قلوبنا على دينك 
Ya Allah, we ask you because of Abul Faz, the name of this holy person, Abul Faz, help us at this night. If we have dunya, don't be attached to this dunya and get attached to you and your friends, inshallah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, help us to get more ma'rifah and knowledge about you, your prophets and Ahlul Bayt in this month, inshallah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, help our youth provide this opportunities for their success, specifically their marriage, inshallah. Those friends who are sick, please cure them at this time. Those who have passed away, send the tawab of this majlis to their soul, inshallah. Rahmanullah, man yaqra al-fatiha, tamasar.